Hey guys, Deepak Shukla here again from SerpWiz. Welcome back to the SerpWiz reports. Uh, head over to www.serpwiz.com if you want to get your free instantly actionable SEO audit in, in less than 37 seconds. So today we're talking about reducing JavaScript execution time. So our, our agency website, pearllemon.com, has a fantastic 10.2 second load, uh, still currently being worked upon. But um, fundamentally, what JavaScript execution time is, is that's the ultimately interactivity that you get on a website. You've got HTML and CSS, which is kind of the you know hypertext markup language and cascading style sheets. So that's the, 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 the elements that you see visually on a page, if you will, as well as the kind of the code. And then the JavaScript is the interactive element. So consider reducing the time spent passing, so going through, um, bringing in the data, compiling it together, and then executing JavaScript. You may find delivering smaller JavaScript payloads helps with this, okay? So if we get head over into Lighthouse, as we can see, when it takes too long to execute, there's several problems. One, network cost. Two, pass and compile cost because it's passed on the main thread, which is, think about it like the, the, the main processor for your actual machine. Um, and when the main thread is busy, the page can't respond to user input because it's doing the thread, i.e. the loading first. There's an execution cost if your page runs a lot of code before the code is needed it delays your time to interactive which is basically people being trying to interact with the site which is a real world um, way of how users kind of perceive page speed and then there's memory because um you know pages can be um janky or, or slow because it feels like well they're consuming a lot of memory um and and sometimes pages can freeze when there's too much memory um that 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 that, that, that is being used for a page or for your Chrome browser, so a computer could freeze uh, or the browser could freeze because of of, 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 of of a slow loading page, there's too much going on. So um, JavaScript execution that's longer than two seconds shows a warning, ours is 10 seconds, uh, hopefully um, it's going to go down within the next few weeks. Um, the audit fails when the execution takes longer than 3.5 seconds and um, then some basic things to just speed up JavaScript execution. You've got only send the code users need by implementing code splitting, minifying and compressing code, removing unused code, and reducing network trips by caching your code with the PRPL pattern. Um, let's just jump into the PRPL pattern um, because that is push render pre cache lazy load. So, um, as you can see here, um, is an acronym that describes a pattern used to make web pages load and become interactive faster. So, PRPL which is preload the most important resources, render the initial route as soon as possible, so the way to do that and the resources required, pre-cache remaining assets, meaning that any other stuff that takes longer, they would be in your cache, and lazy load other routes and non-critical assets. And um, it goes into some detail about that. But if we also Google, um, there's some other things to consider. PRPL is JavaScript optimization, as we discussed. So, um, and they analyze um, load times here on, on the developer Google site. If we head over to um, Rocket, uh, is a superior, so I think it's the WordPress plugin. I think this is a support thing. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, nothing crazy here. So let's have a look at this. This is good from Online Media Masters. Find problematic JavaScript files, um, and that's through your PageSpeed Insights report, which, which we've got basically um, here. So these are the problematic files, as you can see, um, and, and they're things that need speeding up. There's a lot of YouTube in there, which I think we definitely need to, you know, see if we can resolve. Um, and then we talk about, you know, these things that you've probably seen before. So removed unused JavaScript and CSS, optimized third-party JavaScript, which is anything that is, um, you know, non from the website, as you can see here. Um, host third party code locally on your server um, using plugins like OMFG or Flying Analytics. Um, so that's um, quite cool. So I'll probably share this with my dev team actually also as well. Defer JavaScript, delay JavaScript, um, uh, use gzip or broccoli compression. Uh, compressing your data with gzip or broccoli can reduce JavaScript execution time. Broccoli is better than gship, gzip and is supported by Cloudflare and some WordPress hosts. Enable improved asset loader um, in, in Elementor. So there's some really um, powerful elements in here that you can see. So yeah, learning every day, guys. Um, there's a couple of things here that I think we should do as well. There's a lot of things I think we should do, but that is um, a consideration when you're looking at reducing 
JavaScript execution time. Catch you in the next training.